Three Gears possess arguably the finest foot archers in the game, and they've got pretty good infantry as well, and of course, those deadly cavalry. But the Vega troops prefer using two-handed weapons for an offensive advantage against their foes and live in the mountains and snowy northeastern boundaries of the map. But who rules them? Well, King Yarolek is the initial ruler over the Vegas, and Prince Valdheim of the Bastards is their claimant. They have some pretty good strengths with great archers and light infantry. They've got some great horsemen with high maneuverabilities, strong offensive capabilities with two-handed weapons, and some pretty inexpensive troops. They've also got a lot of villages you can recruit from. This means that you've got a bigger army at the earliest stages of the game. I mean, it's basically Russia at this point. They do have some weaknesses, however. They've got poor defensive capabilities, because using two-handed weapons instead of one-handed weapons with a shield means that they're very susceptible to archers and, of course, other infantry that have got throwing weapons. They're also pretty weak against other infantry with shields and top-tier infantry and horsemen that have these shields have better capabilities in defense than they do. Also, because of this lack of shields, they're pretty vulnerable to heavy cavalry. But what about their troops? Well, let's go down the troop tree and see what each of the units can do, what the best way to use them, and what equipment they have. Starting off with the Vega recruits, these are the first tier units. Because the Vegas have so many villages, their commander can quickly raise an army of these soldiers. But however, be quite wary. They're called recruits and that means they're pretty weak. You're gonna to wanna to spend a lot of time in training camps in order to get these guys leveled up before taking them into battle because they're basically bandit-like peasants with a bit better arms but worse skills. They're gonna be doing pretty badly against anything that isn't another bandit or peasant. In terms of melee weapons, they have sides, hatchets, cudgels, and axes. Now, the axes can do pretty large amounts of damage, but watch out for the ones that spawn with hatchets because they're pretty weak. Now, they do have the possibility of spawning with a shield, but other than that, a lot of them don't, which means they are susceptible to archers, meaning that watch out if you're going up against tundra bandits who tend to spawn with a lot of them. Moving on, once you've upgraded them, they can be upgraded to the Vega Footmen, which are the second tier units. Now, normally it tends to split off at this point for factions, but the Vegas tend to stick with the Footmen for starters. These troops are the first in the melee tier for the Vega Troop Tree and found in good numbers under Vega Lords. They will be the main staple of Vega Lords that you find around the battlefield. Funny enough, though, against their popularity, they're the second worst troops in the unit of Vegas, and you really want to be upgrading them to veterans or skirmishers since they're pretty weak. They're, they're able to be beaten by most other troops from other factions and extremely vulnerable to cavalry. They don't really tend to have spears, although there is the possibility of them spawning with them, but most likely they'll be with spike clubs, hand axes, Nordic swords, and two-handed axes. Now, the ones with two-handed axes and spears are a bit better when it comes to chopping infantry, breaking shields, and of course, anti-cavalry, but it's very unlikely that they're going to be spawning with them, and spike clubs, as you can probably guess, aren't the most effective weapons against these sort of enemy troops. They also have pretty weak armor, and it's the same that's worn by mountain bandits, so you can kind of make a comparison there how strong they actually are they're still at that bandit level fortunately though some of them do have shields saying this though it is very low quality so it will be broken very quickly it's a mix of old kite shields and plain kite shields but what if you want to upgrade it at this point? Well, this is where the Vega troop tree starts to split off. This is where you can go with the skirmisher way, where you get Vega skirmishers on the third tier, and they're pretty good to be fair. Due to their decent ranged weaponry and mobility, it's best to keep these units among hills and trees to counter the strengths of cavalry and heavy infantry, the enemies of light infantry. Unfortunately, they do have a lack of shielding, but with some spawning with bows and some spawning with javelins, they're pretty decent when it comes to firing at weaker armored troops from a distance. Although, do watch out because of this lack of shielding, they're also susceptible to other skirmisher units and, of course, infantry and definitely cavalry. On the other side of this, the footman can be upgraded to the Vega Veteran if you want to go down the melee route. And it starts to get quite interesting here because this is one of the only units or classes in Mountain Blade that has a mix of ground and mounted troops. I mean, they are classified of infantry, but they may also spawn on horses. But saying this, if they are dismounted when you do it on the battlefield, they won't be able to mount their horse because they don't actually have the riding skill. If they spawn with it, they'll have that horse, but if they get off, they won't be able to get back on because they don't have the technical skills for it. I mean, it's a bit strange. You're able to ride your horse, but you can't get on a horse. 
I guess that's just how the game works. Vega veterans can serve as early cavalry if you need to, but if you're facing a force of over 20-ish and you only have a few mountain veterans, you might want to hold your guys back because half of them will charge in with the cavalry and half are infantry, which means that they're probably not going to be able to support each other. So getting them to go together is the best way to use Vega veterans. Now, when they're on the ground and actually fighting, they actually rival the strength of some of the Nordic troops of the same tier and possess powerful weaponry, such as big bardiches, etc. They've got powerful two-handed axes as well, which can destroy any other shield regardless. Saying this though, once again, this is a theme that you're going to see with the Vegas. They have lacks of shields, which means they are terrible at defense. And some of the ones that do spawn with shields are really bad shields. They're more plain kite shields, which breaks very easily. Now going up to the fourth tier, we get the Vega Archers. Now these are some of the best archers of their tier compared to other factions. They can also go head to head against archers of higher tiers in other factions. They can easily fight other archers when it comes to on the battlefield since it's to their superior accuracy and fire rate. Saying this though, they can be easily beaten by heavy infantry with shields and all kinds of cavalry. Archers are very susceptible to cavalry. So make sure you put them on hilly areas or among trees. Now the Vega archers have great accuracy like I said before and above average bows with great range that can outclass many other archers. They are probably comparable to the abilities of the Rodok crossbowmen with lower range and attack but a higher rate of fire and arrow capacity. Now in terms of melee combat when they get into the blood and guts areas of the battle they have sabers and axes which means that in melee they'll actually be able to outclass the Grodok crossbowmen when it comes to fighting in melee because they only have spike staves which aren't really great and the Vega archers also have better body armor than the arena tunics that the Rodok crossbowmen wear. Staying on this level with the fourth tier of the Vega infantry which can be upgraded from the Vega veterans. These are the fourth tier melee troops for the Vegas. Now they wear decent enough armor and hold their own in a one on one in the field against pretty much any other infantry but when faced by multiple enemies at once they won't really be able to hold out for too long so make sure you've got a lot of them or at least some other units to support them. Sometimes you can carry two handed axes which can break shields and can offer an easy two hit kill on many higher T units. On the same tier of tier 4 you have the Vega Horsemen which can be once again upgraded from the Vega Veterans. Now these guys of course have a 100% chance of spawning with a horse. Vega Horsemen generally ride on step horses or hunters. They carry a variety of weapons from two handed axes and swords to spears and shields. Although they very rarely use the shield and sword set and are unable to use any form of ranged weaponry. They do wear light armor though but this varies from low tier leather to higher tier lamella armor. Finally we're getting on to the final Final tier. This is the fifth tier of the Vegas, and they start to get extremely powerful at this point. The Vega marksmen are probably generally considered one of the best bow wielding archers in the game and can unleash a hail of arrows that will destroy opposing infantry. However, watch out, these troops damage per second and damage per arrow are a bit lower than that of the Rodok sharpshooters because of course crossbows have the bolts that do a lot more damage but they will take longer to actually reload. So the Vega marksman higher firing rate is very strong against infantry, especially when fighting against weakly armored or unshielded troops. Now, these marksmen have a clear tactical value, different to the Rodok sharpshooters though. If you can preferably get them in the right place with the right protection against cavalry and heavily armed troops, they'll make a very effective unit to order to have on the battlefield, especially because they're not extremely expensive. The best way to really have these on the battlefield would be to have some heavy infantry at the beginning, some Rodok sharpshooters and Vega marksmen at the back, pairing these two up together, having the strength and power from the Rodok sharpshooters, but also having the speed and arrow capacity of the Vega marksmen work so well together and they'll be able to finish off opponents instantly. But what about the infantry? What is the top tier troop of infantry? Well, these are the Vega Guards. The units are slightly more mobile than their Swadian sergeants or Rodon sergeant counterparts, but generally lack the shields, making them very vulnerable to archer fire. You do have to watch out for arrows like pretty much any of the Vega troops. Funnily enough, the Vega guards can actually be seen besting Nord Huskars in melee. This is likely due to the guards favoring two-handed axes in battles, allowing them to destroy the opponent's shield and then strike enemies on the head for one-hit kills during the brief stuns, which is caused by this type of weapon. The guards fight well in defending castles as well because of their pole arms, but once again, watch out for archers. Even in close combat though, it is quite hard to beat another top to infantry with Vega guards. Sometimes even Rodok sharp duty will fight better in melee when there's more of them. Sarenid guards are comparable to them but the Sarenids even have shields which of course make them more defensive when they're running up against them and they spawn with Jareds, meaning they can be hurled before they clash, weakening the Vega guards. And finally, what is the top tier troop for the cavalry of the Vegas? and this is the famed Vega Knights. 
It's argued though that they are worse than Swadian Knights and Saradin Mamluks, however, each troop has its advantages and disadvantages. The Vegas two-handed weapons allow for consistently powerful hits against the enemy and their horses are typically more maneuverable. This means that they're best used in an initial charge, led by the player, through the enemy lines before being issued the command to charge by themselves and mop up any survivors. They spawn with powerful Bardishas and great maneuverability, meaning that they're most effective against forms of light horsemen, in other words, the Kyrgyz army. The knights are often equipped with second bardishes instead of a shield though, and I think like I'm repeating myself quite a lot, making them extremely vulnerable to archers. But that's the Vegas, having some great cavalry and great archers, but making them vulnerable to other archers, quite ironically, is where their strengths and weaknesses lie. Choose to use them to the best of their abilities, putting their archers on top of hills and in forests, putting their infantry down at the front and their cavalry used best in lance charges. Thank you so much for watching. I think it's Kurgitz next. I think that's the last on the list, and I'll make sure I get that video done very soon. Leave a comment. What's your favorite troop of the Vegas? Or is there another faction that you think could absolutely destroy them on the battlefield? Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But until then, I will see you in the next one.